Hi, I'm Lara, and welcome to Muppet Fancast, the show where we Muppet Fancast. That's right, we're going to take a book that has not yet been adapted into a Muppet movie and start fantasy casting Muppets into all of the major roles. We're Muppeting the movie. It's pretty intuitive what we're doing here. We're going to have a good time. And on the chopping block today is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, a thrilling tale of lesbians and skeletons in space. It's likely never going to be adapted to a proper Muppet movie, largely because the bulk of the novel is a slow progression from manor house murder mystery to slasher flick, and it ends with a lot more blood on the screen, or red felt on the screen, than the fine folks at Henson Studios are likely to want. So we're just going to have to do that work for them. As usual, I'll be dropping both a spoiler warning and an inverse spoiler warning here. That is to say, not only am I going to reveal plot details in a fairly cavalier manner, hey -o, I'm also going to talk about this book with the assumption that you've already read it and have at least a general idea of the basic plot beats and character relationships, so I won't bother explaining all of that. If you haven't read Gideon the Ninth already, what are you doing? doing here. Go to your local library. Get get the book. Do it. Oh, and an additional note on this one, the first of four books in the Locked Tomb trilogy, I am only going to focus on the singular novel, Gideon the Ninth, not Harrow or Nona or Electo, which is to say I might use a character in a particular role here, even though they'd be better suited to play, I don't know, Mercy Morn, Hot Sauce, or Gideon the First. Such is life. We endure, and we begin. Per Muppet tradition, most adaptations put a human in the main role. In this case, that would be Gideon Nav herself. The human casting is always a place where I can get a little silly with it, have a little fun. And for this one, I'm thinking Cameron Esposito. I know. I know. Gideon is a teenager and Cameron Esposito is not. However, I, um, I, um, I'm sorry, I started thinking about Cameron Esposito's arms and what they would look like with a friggin' two-hander between them, and suddenly I forgot what we were talking about. Anyway, there are two primary demands of a human in a Muppet movie. To reluctantly descend to the Muppet's level, and to look sincerely like you want to fuck Miss Piggy. I think Cameron will comport herself admirably at both. From here, we're going to stick to the other major players of the Ninth House. Next up, Crux and Aglemony. I'm taking them as a pair because they have two basic roles in the story. They need to be very old and be mean as hell. So this one, rather writes itself, will get Waldorf and Astoria. That's Waldorf's canonical wife uh, and not just Statler and Drag, presumably. Ortis is a big lump of a man with a poet's heart, so I feel something in a Bobo the Bear would work well. He can do soft-spoken. And as for his mother, Sister Glaurica, well, if you're a fan of the show, you knew it was only a matter of time before I'd trot out Mildred Huckstetter. hey -o! Newcomers, there's no shame. If you don't know my girl Mildred, that's okay. She's a native of Spokane, Washington. She's an alumnus of many At The Dance sketches. She is a tragically underappreciated member of the small selection of female Muppets. Sister Glaurica has a smallish role, but it is an important one. Like, comment, and subscribe if you're Team Huckstetter 2, everybody. All right. We've waited long enough for the secondary protagonist of the piece, Harrow Hark. Nonagesimus. Obviously, this is a vital role, so we need a major player. We also need someone who's capable of saying, I don't want you to die because if you died, I'd have to acknowledge your baseline utility as a corpse, so maybe you could just disappear. But not say anything. We need that in a facial expression. So, uh... Gonzo? I think he's got the eyes for it. Now, in this adaptation, we are running headlong into the perennial female Muppet problem. We are happily cross-casting, which is only partially relevant here with this non-binary short king. I think he's an odd choice, but I think he can make this work. Also, 
Gonzo, and by extension Cameron, will be accompanied by a skeletal iteration of Rizzo the Rat. Uh, this is largely to give Gideon someone to bounce off of during scenes that are mostly internal narration, because Harrow doesn't talk too much. With the ninth house spelled out, we're going to continue in reverse numerical order. We're going to be a little more rapid here, hitting the necromancer cavalier pairs together, starting with the eighth house, Silas, Octacisaron, and Column Ashed. Weird ass religious types, Silas especially, has very firm ideas of what is right and proper. Colum, meanwhile, is Silas's uncle, looks kind of ragged on account of how Silas keeps sipping at his delicious soul. So, Sam Eagle and Uncle Deadly. There's a hint of a familial resemblance here, since birds and dragons are closely related. Also, they're both blue. And Uncle Deadly is, canonically, a uncle. Moving on. Dulcinea Septimus with an asterisk, and Protosilaeus Ebdoma from the seventh house. Dulce is sweet and beautiful and frail and chatty, and Prody brings none of those things to Canaan House in favor of being a big guy meat sack and nothing more. Janice is arguably the hottest Muppet, and also I think it would be really funny to see her lying, weak and unable to move, saying, for sure. And opposite her, Sweetums, because this one really does just need to be a full body Muppet, and there ain't nobody tougher than Sweetums. I suppose here's as good as any a place to talk about Scytheria, the actual villain of the piece, the lictor who is impersonating Dulcinea. Longtime Muppets fan cast fans cast know that I like to shy away from the dreaded custom Muppet. You've heard my Christmas Carol rant. Fucking Sweetums, right here. Perfect ghost of Christmas present. But they just made it... Okay, I'm not getting into it, not getting into it again. Point is, yes, normally I try to stick with the extant cast as much as possible, but exceptions do make sense sometimes. When Dulcie reveals herself to actually be Scytheria, we are switching to a custom Muppet. Something that has a hint of Janice in the face, but is clearly, visibly different and... Also kind of monstrous, because she does get increasingly eldritch in those final chapters as her body tears itself apart. All right, on to the sixth house, the nerd house, where the nerds live. And this is going to earn me some ire. I know it already. But the fact remains that if we want a pair where one of them is here to talk and the other is here for action, that pair already exists. Palamedes Sextus is Professor Bunsen Honeydew, and Camilla Hecht is Beaker. And if you have any doubts about the latter, please imagine Beaker getting slashed up and down by swords, and still somehow coming out the victor largely through accident. Now this does put the Professor in an unusually dominant role in the narrative, but I think he's up for it. No longer a side player, Professor Bunsen Honeydew. Speaking of a major player in the narrative, Abigail Pent and her husband, Cum Cavalier, which in my script looks like Cum Cavalier, which is hilarious, Magnus Quinn. We want cozy. We want parental. We want dad jokes. We want Fozzie Bear and Ralph. I've assigned Fozzie the Abigail role here. There's precedent. Fozzie's mother is a repeat character. I know the puppet can pull it off. But honestly, I think you could switch these around and it would still work just fine. The vibes would be a little bit different, but they work well together. They're a good pair of parents. Uh, Isaac Tatares and Jean-Marie Chater from the fourth house. They're babies, tweens, they're barely on solid foods. Scooter, as Isaac feels natural. And okay, I'm going to drop controversial castings left and right, but stay with me. Skeeter, I know. I know. She's a Muppet Babies original. She has barely any presence outside of that. She didn't even have a puppet for me to put on the slide? But we need an energetic femme counterpart to Scooter. And frankly, it's time. Skeeter is out there somewhere waiting for her shot to get on the stage. We are Skeeter truthers now, you and I. All right, moving right along. Third house. Twin necromancers, Coronabeth and Ianthe Tridentarius. One of them is uncommonly beautiful, one of them is uncommonly vicious, and Miss Piggy hasn't shown up on the list yet. So, friends, if I didn't cast her as Ianthe, she would hit me. So here we are. 
As far as Corona goes, there are a couple of options. I, I briefly thought Annie Sue would work, Piggy's occasional rival, but I don't think she's got it. I think we do need Piggy in both roles. We could have two Piggy puppets, who says we can't, but personally, I think the funny option is to exclusively have Yonthe and Corona Beth share the screen via piss poor green screen compositing. That's hilarious. Oh, um, and their cavalier, Nibiria's turn is a big dumb ego in the vague shape of a handsome man, so Link Hogthrob to the stage. All right, we're in the home stretch. I'm starting to run low on energy. Judith, Deuteros, and Marta Dias represent the second house, largely made up of soldiers. Marta will be played by the one Muppet with a canonical military rank, Sergeant Floyd Pepper. And now the gag is they're just wildly inappropriate casting, so let's just say that Zoot is Judith. Friends, I know these folks matter a lot in the background material, and Judith especially in the later books, but in this one they are borderline props. There are too many characters. My first draft of the script, I just put two chickens in these roles. Let me move on. On to the first house and teacher. We want pomp, we want drama, we want oration that sounds pleasant but doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. We want Dr. Teeth with animal and lips as the other Canaan house priests. That's right, baby, I got the whole electric mayhem in this movie. As for the many skeletal constructs, these are going to be our dumping grounds for other Muppets that need some air time but don't have an appropriate role. Who's that skeleton bringing the food? Why, it's the Swedish chef, but made of bones. You get where I'm going with this. Finally, the man who is notable by his absence, the King Undying, the Kindly Prince, the Necrolord Prime himself, Emperor John Gaius. He doesn't show up until the final few pages, but his presence nonetheless permeates the entire narrative. And is there a Muppet who so thoroughly encompasses the Muppets? A Muppet who is always there, even when he's not? Who is, in some senses, the host? Kermit the Frog here. You've been waiting to see him, even if you didn't know it. You thought he would be Palamedes or Magnus or Harrow. No. No. This was a hard choice, because the Emperor is a perfect spot for a stunt celebrity cameo. It'd be delightful if it was Jack Black or Jason Siegel, But it had to be Kermit. You know it. Friends, necromancers and cavaliers, whatever house you belong to, although frankly, if you made it this far into the video, it's probably the sixth house, you fucking nerd. I think we can all agree this movie would be amazing. As always, I invite you to join me as a casting director. Let me know who you'd put in these roles, especially Gideon. You know, sometimes I get accused of not fully considering the human characters in favor of just putting up a picture of a hot lesbian. This has been Muppets Fancast. Good night, everybody!